Hi, this is Shadi, and today we're gonna be comparing Judo Jiu Jitsu versus Western Catch Wrestling or Catch as Catch Can, and we're gonna see a lot of common points and also discuss the ethics of competition rules and also the effectiveness. Where is it dangerous, and at the same time, how can we leave the most effective system possible and at the same time keep it safe so we can come back day after day? On the mats and train so what we will do today is actually go through the book 1938 guide to wrestling rules uh, found in the Japanese National Diet Library of course great thanks to Eric Shehan uh, I was looking through the library for Western wrestling and he was able to find this gem of course the link will be in the description so the first technique is gonna be the first violation which is the double Nelson can understand why this technique can be very dangerous however it is one of the signature moves for catch as catch can but in terms of the damage of on the spine it is very dangerous and at the same time it can cause lasting damage so the first one is a classical one i was a bit surprised to find this as a violation since it is one of their specialty so the next one is this technique here where you have a half nelson but check out what is happening with the arm so if the forearm uh, get passes 90 uh, degrees with the elbow this is where it's considered a violation anything below that you can actually do it so you can actually learn the technique and apply it through uh, competition and competing but as you start to get higher and higher of course the risk on the shoulder becomes higher and thus this rule was put in so it's kind of a halfway you know you want to keep it safe but at the same time you want to keep the technique so this is very reminiscent of one of the least used arm locks in judo which is the te gatame let's take a look at te gatame for a second so te gatame the basic form of it here it's coming from this yoko wakare or the unofficial name called ude gaishi this is an illegal move you can only pull it off in newaza so here this is the basic form of te gatame you actually push and actually extend your torso locking the shoulder and of course you can also lock the elbow through it so here is another one where you are passing someone's open guard you block the arm you take it here and you put it behind the back as we've seen in the wrestling book but obviously from another position so here let's see again he's going for upside down guard or you know having his open guard passed um, some will try to do like an upside down position in order to avoid the pass but here you actually take the belt with a double under grip put them on their neck which is also can be dangerous on the neck there's a one from Kawaishi's book where you can actually press them down on the neck but here we're we're focusing on the arm so you put it behind the back locking the shoulder so it's te gatami hand hold so you hold with one hand and you just press and create pressure either on the elbow or on the arm depending on how you are doing it so here let's see it for, it's very similar to the wrestling book so here it doesn't get past 90 degrees and still it looks incredibly painful it is only by the belt level and look how painful it can be on the shoulders not everyone has flexible shoulders and thus this is very dangerous so as you can see he's holding with the hand and he's just pulling hence the the name Tegatami here you can create like an Americana Ude Garami style lock but since the arms are not entangled you know all three arms are entangled so it's not considered you know Ude Garami this is just Tegatami the next one is your classical hammer lock same thing the arm should not form a 90 degree angle or the tricep so to speak should not form a 90 degree angle with the back and this is where it can be dangerous so you have a limited angle for you to do it otherwise it's a violation so notice the entanglement with one leg only and being on the side and pulling it off very reminiscent to you know judo's ude garami but notice the entanglement is much different it is diagonal and uh, much different let's take a look uh, here where they actually point it out the leg entanglement notice the red arrow and how you have one shin and one uh, leg 
barely hooking it in. So notice the what is called shin on shin in jujitsu, they call it. He is doing it here. And at the same time, you have another one behind the hamstring locking it. And he's doing a udegarami. This is well over 90 degrees and it is considered highly dangerous. So by the book standards, this is considered a violation. Now here, at the, this violation is when someone has your back, you you can do all sorts of things very reminiscent of Sakuraba. You know, he would either take the arm, he would knee bar them, he would do um, so many things. Uh, but here, uh, the violation is the twisting of the uh, ankle, toe hold, um, or any type of leg locking concerning twisting of the leg. So, of course, you have your classical ankle lock where they make the grave mistake of locking their feet together. You can just simply extend your legs and lock their uh, legs with yours, as you can see here demonstrated by Mifune. Here you can see the same thing. Someone is locking in Ashi Garami and Mifune is simply doing a toe hold and pressing it down on them. It's the same violation as we've seen in the book, but from a different position. Here, check this framing by Mifune. It is very strange. I cannot grasp it fully because he's such a small man and I don't know how he's getting into the back, but notice what he does with the leg. It is absolutely gruesome. So here he pins him down. Uh, one hand on the leg and one hand, I believe, on the collar. So here he grabs the ankle, pulls it down, and imagine what's this doing to the knee. This is absolutely gruesome. The same thing, same violation, twisting of the ligaments. And the final one, last but not least, the one that surprised me the most, and that is head scissors. Um, you know, the top three, um, I would say, submissions for catch as catch can are your head scissors, your hammer lock, and your double Nelson and here there are violations everyone is differing in a different way but here it is a complete violation and you can understand why a head scissors in judo is a hansokumake as well let's go back to the early 1900s you know book of jujitsu um, by Yukio Tani here you can see the head scissor a neck lock um, you can easily squeeze the, head, squeeze the head and cause all sorts of damage with this um, you can triangle your legs short and put your arm in, but like a head scissors straight legs, it is highly dangerous. Here you can see it. Obviously, this fight is fixed. Uh, Ricky Dozan versus Kimura, uh, the signature head scissors uh, moment. So, um, what I really liked about this book is that they created a like different from these techniques because you know where, where can you, what angle is deemed you know safe there, there's no safe angle for the next twist or here the torture rack or this uh, boston crab as you call it in catch as catch can but i do like the idea of creating a certain angle where if you get past it you actually create a violation but the technique itself isn't banned but um, you can easily make an argument against this particular lure, rule. Um, you can easily say um, the level of competition is very high. You want to, you know, take something and just crank it up the way we do with heel hooks, arm bars, etc. So getting past that 90 degree is going to be easy and nobody's going to stick to that rule. So, uh, and at the same time, you cannot ban a technique like an Ude Karami. So what's the point here? And I agree, but, um, in case you want to, you know, maybe, I don't know, in class or again, you know, when it comes to training lightly for the 99.9% .9 of us athletes who are not at the top of the, uh, of the level, rules like these are actually, you know, somewhat good. You know, Uday Garami past 90 degree in training, you know, just take care of your partner. Same thing with the Te Gatame, uh, etc. So, you, you are in this middle uh, ground here that I really like. You can actually apply a technique, learn it, and train it with your partners. Uh, and that's one thing they tell you in, in training, that apply a submission progressively, whether it's a strangle or uh, a joint lock. Apply it progressively in training. So once you caught them, you caught them. So it, it's not about the intensity of the technique, but I can understand in competition when there, when there is a lot of sponsorship money there's the prize there's the gold medal etc you crank it up easy you just want to get that win but in training you know it's all about framing it's all about you know catching them in that position 
where they can see the submission coming from a mile away, but they cannot do anything. It's all about that. It's not the submission itself. So uh, taking these um, angles and uh, precautions uh, in mind while applying such techniques is, in my opinion, very safe, very, very admirable. I really like the idea and also very ethical because, you know, you want your training partner to come back the next day for training and also get better together and benefit each other. You know, we go back to the whole um, Serio Kuzenyu of, I'm sorry, uh, Jita Kyoe of Judo, which is mutual prosperity for self and others. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. The book will be linked in the description uh, below. And of course, thank you, Eric Shehan, for these incredible findings. And of course, the link for Eric Shehan's books, translated books, will be in the description as well. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.